Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. And I am excited to talk to you about something that's super, super important to me. It is creativity. And I want to talk about why creativity is still winning on Amazon specifically and how I feel like tapping into our creativity is the way that we can differentiate ourselves from other Amazon sellers, other Amazon products even, right? I am fascinated with AI and also terrified of it. Artificial intelligence is so scary to me because there's so many capabilities and so many different ways that they can, I don't know if you even watched America's Got Talent recently. My daughter likes to watch that and we caught, caught an episode where they're li literally using AI live to make it look like these judges are, are opera singers and different things like that. So it is absolutely crazy to think of all the different crazy things that they can do with AI now. But let's be real. Algorithms and AI and artificial intelligence are exactly that. They're artificial. They're not human. They don't create they react, they respond. They can be programmed by a human, which then can try to program from a specific viewpoint or different ways that the brain works. But let's be real, they don't think like we think. They don't create, they react and respond based on their programming. This is our human advantage when it comes to selling products. It really is. We have we all have equal opportunity to use software and bots to bring profitable products to Amazon. Am I right? I mean, you guys can get tactical arbitrage. You can get Helium 10. You can get Jungle Scout. You can get merchant words to look up all of the keywords in the searches and say, what are customers looking for? What are the most popular products? What are the most biggest data points that's going to bring me the most money for my business? Yeah, we can do that all with AI. We can do that with software. We can do that with algorithms. But bots and software and AI cannot find solutions to problems and anticipate wants and needs of human customers. They can only do what they're programmed to do. Once you set up the rules about what you need and what you want and say like, for example, if any of you guys use tactical arbitrage or things like that, you can set up these rules and regulations to be like, okay, I don't want a product that's less than 75% ROI and it has to be under the 1% in this category and setting up all these rules and then you hit go and then your bot will come back and spit out different products that you can kind of bring to the table based on that. And they might be very limited because maybe your um, data points are limited, whatever that is, but it cannot anticipate that this product might be this product. Here, my perfect example is, have you ever gotten a suggestion from Amazon or Google or any of your ads that you have online? It's like suggestions for you um, based on your previous content view or whatever else, you know, that's what the bots are trying to do. They're trying to anticipate what we're interested in based on what we've already, all the data we've already given them and then try to give us more of what they think we want. But have they ever completely like missed the mark and they set suggestions for you and it was something that like so bizarre and had nothing to do with anything that you thought, you know, anything that you are looking for or looking into? I definitely have. I've seen suggestions on Amazon that come up or suggestions on even Facebook or, or Instagram. They're like, oh, suggested videos for you based on your previous views. And it's like something so out there and bizarre that I don't even care about. And I'm like, how did they get that? Well, that's an algorithm just doing their best based on different data and different keywords that people are you know, putting into that. I don't know much about programming and all that. So I'm not going to pretend to know what's on the back end with all of those things, but I will tell you this, what I have learned in business over two decades now is that it's creativity that really sets us apart from the rest. It's thinking, creating, and understanding needs of customers and what they want and what they desire and what their products that they're going to be using for. The, what are they going to use the products for? Creating. So what is even the definition of all that? Because I hear a lot of people all the time say, oh, I'm just not really that creative. Well, we're all can be creative and I'm going to teach you some ways today to get more creative if you feel like you're in a rut or you're feeling like I'm just not very creative or whatever else. There are definitely steps you can take. This is a skill you can develop and continue to develop. You don't, if even if you have a 10% um, 
creativity capacity, you can increase that. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but just kind of coming to mind, doing business requires you to be creative in different ways. If we're the same as everybody else, we're not different and therefore we don't stand out and therefore people dismiss you or your product or whatever it is you're doing. You've got to be able to bring something to the table that the customers are looking for, meeting their needs, solving their problems. So what does create? To bring into being, to form out of nothing, which I could argue with forming out of nothing for ourselves or causing to exist to make or to cause to become, to bring into existence. Bundles are definitely my way of creating. I absolutely love exploring ideas in a different way. Even if like, I have a lot of bad ideas, it's gonna be awesome. Like, I'm just gonna be honest and tell you that I have bad ideas. I have good ideas, I have great ideas, but then I have some that are just eh. But that's the part of creating that we need to be doing. Now, creating something someone wants to buy is because it solves a problem or meets a need that they have. Regardless of anything else, they have a need. Even if their need is, for example, this proves the creativity out there. People do not want the same old, same old. Unique gifts for your boss, search 2,500 times a month that exact phrase. Unique gifts for my boss or for a boss. Bots only know how to connect information that's already there. But as humans, we can create, sort, and deduct from our own reasoning these specific things. People are looking for unique and different and creative and quirky. Look up those words on Merchant Words or whatever keyword software you're using. I hope it's Merchant Words. Mommyincome.com slash Merchant Words is the absolute best in my opinion. I love it. It's easy. It's easy to just literally do a 30 second search and get your information that you need. And understanding all that, it's not just about bots and software. You're going to have to think. You're going to have to create. You're going to have to use your brain to think about these things bots can help certainly software can help us at least narrow down some ideas but the who what when where why and how of a product or a bundle is essential who is it for what they gonna what are they gonna use it for what need does it meet or problem does it solve for them for example going back to unique gifts for your boss like nobody wants the same old same old right i mean it's like you want to be the one that's giving the gift that's like epic right and so this is what people are searching for. They want unique and different gifts. They don't want the same old, you know, whatever that people are giving. So I'm always thinking about the gift market. Why? Because there's gifts for every single thing. There's a way to gift to people. I love thinking about gifts. And that's one of my main um, focuses on my Amazon bundles is gifts for all kinds. Uh, for all kinds of reasons, for all kinds of people, for all kinds of demographic, older, younger, kids, adults, bosses, everything. What need does it meet or problem does it solve? Now, recently I was doing a search about unique gifts for boss and realized that there is just a lot of single lackluster items out there. There's not a lot of bundles or gift baskets or gift boxes. Now I've done the research. I'm just going to share this with you. You're welcome. I've done the research on gifts up, down, left, right, Pinterest, Google. Like I do a lot of research. I love research. I love learning. I love ex learning new things. So all the research, the average gift for mostly anything, even birthdays and right now is around the $50 range, 30 to $60. And it depends on how close you are to someone. Usually if you're closer, that number goes up for a spouse, for a sister, a mother, a dad, like people are willing to spend more on, on people that they, they're closer to things like a boss or a cousin or going to a kid's birthday party or something like that. Like those extravagant things are not usually there. And usually the extravagance is saved, um, for things like Christmas or anniversaries or things like Valentine's day. Like, um, people don't generally splurge on a gift, like buying a diamond ring just for no reason. Usually it's something epic, something big, some sort of, um, event. So, but the creativity is really what's going to set us apart from everything else. What need does it meet or problem does it solve? So in that $50 range, there's a lot of gift options, but as you're looking on Amazon and you're looking for unique gift items, you're, you're seeing a lot of like, okay, that's kind of cool, like by itself, but like, it's kind of just by itself. 
it's not a gift box. It's not a gift basket. It doesn't have a wow factor. It's just kind of like, oh, you just randomly grabbed something on Amazon and, and gave it to me. Like, we don't want that to be how we're giving gifts, right? So we have to think. And the creativity and the creation sets us apart from all the bots and the software. Because, yes, I will be honest. You absolutely can use software to find profitable products to sell on Amazon. The problem is it's just going to have to be done over and over and over again. You're going to run into problems like price tanking and everything else. You know why? Because you have equal opportunity, just like any other person to search the same things and come up with the same results. So what's going to set you apart from every hundred other people that are maybe getting the same lead list or the same or hundred other people that are that are looking at the same criteria? They want 100 percent ROI and they want it to be below one percent and they want it to be in the really fast moving category like grocery or, um, you know, clothing, shoes and accessories, whatever. These are the fastest growing uh, categories on Amazon grocery in particular. So if you wanted to be there, guess what? Everyone else has the same parameters, right? They want the cream of the crop just like you. And the bots don't know how to separate wants and needs. They only separate data. So then what are you going to do with it? You've got to have research skills to be in this business. You can't just rely on software to constantly feed you. Because if something happens to that software, where is your next product going to come from? You don't know how to dig for it yourself. That's what sets people apart from bots and from the winners and the people that are semi succeeding and the people that are crushing it, the people that are crushing it are being creative. They're tapping into their creative resources, wondering where they can go beyond the bots, beyond the algorithms, beyond the software, because all those things are tools and they're helpful, but without a human to use the tools, the tools are useless to think through, to use your reasoning, to use your creativity. So that's my soapbox. Creativity is what sets you apart from other people. Why it still wins on Amazon is because, yeah, we need everyday products all the time. And I expect that when I go and buy my contact solution on Amazon on subscribe and save, it's just there. Okay, I don't need creativity to buy that. But when we're starting to think about different things, um, gifts, we just came out of a holiday season. We're going into another season where, you know, guess what? Valentine's Day is a huge gift market. So who's buying gifts for who and what? What are they using them for? What kind of gifts? Are you thinking about the couples, older couples, younger couples, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, all the different things that you could be bringing to the table? It's creativity. Bots are not going to help you sort that out. So here's, I'm going to give you some suggestions to be more creative, to boost your creativity, because I 100% believe that this is how I've set my business apart from the rest this is how I've found success on Amazon is by being creative, creating product bundles that meet a need and solve a problem for the customer out there and the customers that we have access to. One, 153 million US Amazon Prime customers, 153 million. Just let that sink in for a second. That's a lot of people that have access to the product that you're bringing to the table. You're telling me you can't sell 30 to 60 a month of something? 30 to 60 people out of 153 million Amazon Prime subscribers. Not to mention all the people that aren't Prime that still use Amazon for everything. Not to mention all the people on Google looking for products that then your Amazon listing comes up. See? You see where I'm going with this? You don't have to be. Your creative outside of the box bundle does not have to please 1 million people. Create 12 bundles, one for every month of the year sell one a day of those. Cha-ching! That's what you need to do. It doesn't have to be this big, huge, multi-billion dollar corporation that you're building. But you gotta be creative. And so I'm gonna give you a few tips here. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet to change it up to be a little bit more creative and tap into that creative brain. Because some of us, let's just be real, some of us have this, was it left brain, like logical, analytical, we're not very creative, we're very concrete, we're very black and white. I say we, I'm not really one of those. I'm more of the, the right brain, creative, emotional, whatever. I don't know. I don't have all the, the real words for all this stuff, but like, I'm serious. I read a lot. I study a lot. I learn when I don't know, I ask when I don't know something, I'll Google it. I'll look it up. I'll read multiple articles on the same topic to make sure that I'm getting information from different places. And are they doing studies or they're just talking out of their elbow? Um, 
but I have done some research and realized what can enhance our creativity. Some is from my own life and some is just from like what the, there's some research here that uh, from psychologists and studies or whatever. So I'm going to share this stuff with you to help you boost your creativity because honest to goodness, that's what's going to set you apart from everyone else. It doesn't mean you, you have to bring, you're reinventing the wheel and have something absolutely brand new to bring to the table. You don't have to be an inventor, but creativity brings something to the table that you can enhance your customer experience and your, your products based on that. So number one is to be a kid again, tap into your inner child. Now, children are naturally more creative because they're uninhibited by all the judgments or worldly expectations or overthinking or fear or worry. Most children are just naturally in their creative minds. You give a kid a product that they have never seen before, a, a thing, and ask them, what do you think it might be used for? The answers might shock you something they've never seen or never experienced and you hand them this this product and they're just like what is this and what what do you think this does an electronic or you know something like that a kitchen tool that they've never seen what do you think this does and they come up with all kinds of creative ways of thinking what that thing could possibly do because they literally have no idea so they just tap into their creative mind and start guessing they don't feel wrong they're just like oh well that could be used for this or if i had this i would use it for this or it looks like it would do this that is the creative kid mind that's uninhibited and doesn't have all this worry and expectation that you might get it wrong or that you might, it's just a, a fun guessing game. So Allie and I, we like to play this game called Wouldn't It Be Cool If? And it's just a phrase. And as we're like hanging out, laying around, driving in the car, whatever, we're like, hey, I'll just say, wouldn't it be cool if? And then she'll be like, oh, and like you're just whatever off the top of your head. So one of the things I say to her is like, wouldn't it be cool if we could fly like birds? So it's like, oh, I want to go see my bestie today. And she lives, you know, a hundred, a thousand miles away. So what do I do? I could fly, like literally put on my wings like Superman and be like, okay, I'm going to my bestie's house today. Or like, oh, the sun has not been out in Michigan in literally like 16 days. Yes, I know. We need to have a moment of silence for that. Yeah, 16 days. The sun has, is dead. It's not here. <laughs> Anyway, um, honestly, it's like, wouldn't it be cool if I could just fly to a sunny place for a day and just like soak up and get some of my vitamin D and like recharge my batteries? Because literally, y'all, I'm so solar powered. I'm like, my battery is literally like waning away because there's no sun here in Michigan. It's gray and cloudy most of the winter. Anyway, so wouldn't it be cool if I could just fly to the beach every day and be there? So that I could have some sun, you know, so, so tap into being a kid again, thinking like a kid, giving yourself the, the freedom of no judgment to just come up with whatever silly idea you can think of and writing them all down. Or, you know, I love to get a whiteboard. I have a whiteboard in my office and like colored markers. And sometimes I just feel like I have to splash some color around and just be silly and just be like, okay, what are these dumb ideas? Like one, another one, they don't even have to be dumb. That's even passing judgment on your own self. You know, they're just ideas. Or just creative ways to to solve problems or meet needs and you can just be a kid and try to kind of think of those things that really helps tap into that creativity and also realizing that no one is judging your creativity right in those moments when you're trying to come up with ideas or think through an issue it's like it's private it's all your own you don't have to worry about someone being like oh that's a really stupid idea like in the moment it's just it just is allowing yourself that space to just be a kid and just be like, oh, it doesn't matter. Kids are so minimally offended by things because they don't know they're supposed to be offended or no one has ever told them or they don't have these societal rules that they have, they're living by anymore. They're just innocent kids with fun, loving, creative minds. And if we can just rewind ourselves and be with a kid, and if you don't have any kids right now or grandkids or anything like that, like borrow a neighbor kid for a second and just like hang out for a half hour and just like let them rule what we're doing and it's so interesting what they come up with and fun kids can be really fun they can also be annoying i know that too but that's usually because we're in a hurry and we've got things to check off of our list and somebody's impeding on our our productivity i don't know i'm just being honest here um the next one to tap into your creativity and to kind of expand it is to laugh believe it or not these little things can help you boost your creativity. A good mood 
enhances the side of your brain that needs creativity, that has creativity. When we're in a good mood, that part of our brain that's responsible for the creativity is more sensitive to odd thoughts and strange hunches and good ideas and just ideas. But the opposite is also true. A good mood can increase your creativity, but a bad mood amplifies the analytical thought. Our brain limits our options and we go back to the tried and true, the logical, the obvious, the sure thing we know that will work. A good mood helps us feel safe and secure and we're willing to take more risks. This matters because creativity is always a little bit dangerous. It's not tried and true. It's not factual. It's an idea and a creation that we are bringing to the table. See, new ideas can also generate problems and they can also be flat out wrong, tricky to figure out. So laughter and a good mood allows us to safely explore our new ideas and our new options. Laughter usually puts us in a good mood and a good mood then enhances this creativity. Now, did you know that kids laugh around 300 times a day? And that kids are naturally more creative and explorative and uninhibited than adults are. Adults laugh approximately 20 times a day compared to 300 for a child. Now, if we just stood that side by side, say children laugh more, children are more creative, adults laugh less or adults are less creative. So let's enhance our mood. Now, I have a podcast suggestion for you if you want to laugh a little bit more. It's called. <laughs> Beach too sandy, water too wet, right? And it is literally like, this is the concept of the podcast. It's dramatic readings of one-star reviews from every corner of the internet. <laughs> the end. I'm not going to say any more than that. Just go give it a listen. Beach too sandy, water too wet. If you want to laugh and boost your creativity, listen to something funny. Watch a funny movie. Like, just watch some funny videos on YouTube. And then get to tapping into that, get yourself belly laughing, and then tap into your creativity. That activates, literally activate, think about that, turns it on, shines a light on it, activates creativity, laughter. I don't laugh enough, y'all. I'm just saying, I do. I laugh a lot because my husband's super funny, but like, I want to laugh more. I'll tell you, I spend a little more time stressing and a little less time laughing, and I want that to be reversed. Okay, number three, give your solitude and nature. Solitude and nature. Now, not everybody loves this concept. Not everybody likes this idea and this concept of, of the solitude and nature. But give yourself intentional alone time with minimal stimulus, preferably in a natural or nature setting. Now, I'm going to be honest. I struggle to sit still. I don't, I like nature, but it has to be like perfect kind of weather. Like right now, the nature I have access to is cloudy, 30 degrees, raining, overcast. It's not pretty. It's all dead right here, right now. So going out in nature, if that's nature for me right now, is not pleasant. That's going to put me in a bad mood. So I get it. Like not everybody loves nature or there's, there's it's hot and it's too, it's too many bugs or it's, it's too, you know, whatever else. But there is some, there's studies, studies from the University of Utah and the psychologists there found this study. In 2012, they ran a study. After four days alone in nature, now we're not saying you're roughing it and living in like a tent and whatever kind of stuff, but after four days alone, not with other people, but when in a natural nature setting, subjects scored 50% higher on tests of creativity after spending four days alone in nature. This has been studied, y'all. Nature brings us more creativity. If we're enjoying the nature in a solitude kind of way, that doesn't mean you have to go out and create it for four days like they did the study. How about for 20 minutes? Sitting in the backyard, closing your eyes, listening to the sounds, feeling the, the temperature. I don't know if you want to do that here in Michigan, but like I'm just imagining people who live in like, I don't know, Florida or something. Somewhere where it's beautiful and nice weather most of the time. But if we take a break 
from all of the sensory bombardment that the world is constantly throwing at us, our brain will have more reason to wander into those far off places. There's corners of our brain that we have not accessed in a long time because we're overloaded, overstimulated, overthinking, over everything. I promise that slowing down even for one hour every couple of days is not going to kill you. It's actually going to help you. It's going to help you. You want to be more creative? Take an hour off. Walk outside. Sit outside. Go somewhere where it's beautiful that you enjoy the space and the nature of all the things. And then watch the creativity. But be alone. I know some people don't like being alone. I understand that. I love people. I'm a people person. I love to be around people, but I also really enjoy being by myself because I love to think. And sometimes I just can't think when there's too many things, too much stimulus, too much things going on. Solitude matters. It doesn't have to be for long, but it has to be intentional. If you want to be more creative, get alone and get into nature especially a place that you enjoy. If you'll enjoy hiking, go on a hike. And then instead of coming right back after 20 minutes, force yourself to sit there for 15 minutes with a single piece of paper or your phone. I mean, I, I hate the phone. I'm not even going to say the phone. Forget the phone. I know people don't like writing. Some people don't like writing, whatever. Just do it. One little small piece of paper, a sticky note even. And just jot some ideas down as you're sitting there unstimulated by anything else but your own mind and the nature around you, whether that's snow or mountains or beach or flowers or green grass or the zoo. I don't know. Whatever it is for you, get alone, get in nature and watch your creativity soar. Also, we can help you with this is if you're sitting in nature, if you want to, you know, take these walks or whatever it is that you're doing is getting a list of journal prompts. I have this journal prompt book that I absolutely love. And it's not really journaling like we're not getting into foo foo deep thoughts which you can, if that's what works for you. But sometimes the creative journal prompts I have are like, they give you like the first line of a story and then you're supposed to just creatively like fill it in. You know, not quite like Mad Libs, but like, like just, it's just like a, a story starter. Like what I said earlier, what, wouldn't it be cool if? Wouldn't it be cool if my car, fill in the blank. Wouldn't it be cool if as humans we could I don't know. So giving yourself some of that, go to Amazon and look at journal prompts or, um, you know, creative journal prompts or creative writing prompts or, you know, something like that. And you don't have, it doesn't have to be hours and hours, 15 minutes is sometimes all you need to spark it or just Google it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just Google, um, you know, interesting journal prompts. And finally, another strong way, and y'all are not going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway, and it's for me and it's for you and it's for all of us. Okay. The final way to really deep dig down into your creativity is to dance, run, walk, play, AKA exercise. And when I think of exercise, when somebody says that word, I like want to run for the hills because our minds and my idea and my mind of exercise is like this heavy burden that's going to make you all goopy and sweaty. And uh, uh, like, I don't know. I don't know when someone says exercise to you, do you just like, oh, yay, that's my favorite thing. Okay. But it can be. It's the type of exercise. Exercise, meaning bringing increasing um, heart rate and increasing oxygen that's really what exercise does it brings more oxygen to the brain that brain that you need to create right it activates the brain the oxygen that's why they say deep breathing can really help you because you're bringing more oxygen into your body which is what your body needs needs oxygen, needs many other things, but needing that. So when I say exercise, I don't mean go out for a run. If you hate running, hey, me, hate running, hate running, not running. I'm not running unless it's after the ice cream truck, okay, or the taco truck. That's where I'm running to. Like, wait for me, okay? That's me. But I love to dance. I don't, I like walking. I like playing cornhole. I like yoga. That is all exercise. Any activity that increases 
the blood flow to your brain and increases your heart rate. Now, when I say increase your heart rate, I don't mean that you're like literally <sighs> huffing puffing. I'm talking about slightly increasing your heart rate. It brings exercise actually naturally puts you in a good mood, activates the endorphins and serotonin, all the stuff that you need in your brain that puts you in a good mood. So circle back to the second one we said about laughter. When you're in a good mood, your brain is free to create. It's not stress. Stress puts pressure on the brain and then the pressure on the brain reverts back to only what we know is logical and solid. We cannot think what they say outside of the box um, or we can't think creatively when there's too many stress points. Exercise puts that in, in you put you in a good mood. There's so many benefits, but exercise does not have to be like, we have to go to the gym and pump iron for this long or take this much of a run. Like, what do you enjoy? I mean, to be honest, I really kind of enjoy sitting on the couch and having a glass of wine, but at the same time, I enjoy creating. And if I can enhance that for 30 minutes a day, moving my body in a way that feels good and right and still activates that extra oxygen and the extra blood flow that we need, it gives me a benefit. And it doesn't have to be something you dread. I exercise every day. I just don't do it the way most people would think you actually, oh, what kind of exercise do you do? Do you run? Do you walk? Do you, you know, whatever else? I'm like, no, I play cornhole and do yoga. Yeah. But that gets everything moving and flowing in oxygen. It naturally puts you in a good mood. It also sleep. How many of you are sleep deprived? Most of us can't imagine spending seven solid hours sleeping. Some of us can't physically even do that. But sleep is really important. It gives our brain the rest it needs to be fully active when we wake up. So taking care of yourself in a way that feels good and right, but also enhances all these things is super, super helpful. So if you don't feel like you're creative enough, these are ways to get more creative. And getting more creative brings more profit to your business because your creative brain can do something that AI and bots and software cannot do. And it's create. So I'm encouraging you to create something new. I encourage you to think outside of the box and open up your creativity. Go listen to a podcast or, or a show or something or TV or funny YouTube videos for half an hour. Laugh your head off and then get a piece of paper and write some stuff down. Just be creative. Give it a journal prompt or, or even answer the one I gave you today. Wouldn't it be cool if? And just see how creative you actually are when you tap into some of these natural resources that you have physically in your own brain and body. Give it a try and let me know. Let me know how it worked for you. Try it. If you just feel lackluster or in a rut or feel like, oh, I just don't feel very creative right now. There's a lot of things that could be hindering you. It could be your, you know, emotional, spiritual, you know, things going on in your life, but we have access to the creative part of our brain if we are intentional. So go create, go make yourself laugh, act like a kid, build something, get some Legos. Like, I don't know, whatever floats your boat there. Like I used to love to build things and create things and color and, you know, things like that. And who makes time for that anymore? I do actually do. I color on a regular basis. I create things on a regular basis, even if nobody ever sees them. I create bundles for Amazon. Yes, but I also create jewelry art projects that no one ever sees except me and maybe occasionally a couple people in my family. I don't sell them. I don't give them. I mean, I give some away sometimes, but like, that's just my space. Well, while I'm creating that also frees my mind to create product bundles. I'm literally physically creating something that has nothing to do with my business. Somehow in my mind, I'm still creating stuff for my business. It's like um, energy brings more energy. It's like creativity brings more creativity. So this is your challenge. You do one of these activities right here and just then test your own creativity. See how you feel when you're in a good mood. Create something. You guys got this. This is going to set your business apart from every other AI software using bots out there. That will not 
bring you the fulfillment and the big successful business that you want just by bots. Eventually everyone catches up, AI catches up, and then you have to use your creativity. And those that are already doing it are already winning. So you guys, thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. I don't take that for granted. I appreciate you listening. I hope that you are learning and creating and doing all the things that you can to um, become a better version of yourself and having a better version of your business. Y'all, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.